Obviously, you've been looking at this all morning, um, and you know that the vast majority of organisations have reported a gender pay gap that's in favour of men, and the vast majority of organisations point to the higher numbers of men in senior and better paid roles as being the cause, and only a few specific sectors can reasonably point to the external pipeline in education and training as a major factor, and I'm sure Sarah and Andrea will be addressing this later. But most of us face the uncomfortable truth that women are overrepresented lower down, even though they often make over 50% of graduate entrance, but something is holding back their career progression. And the result is unplanned female attrition, um, which is still too often accepted as inevitable. So actually, I urge you, if you haven't already seen it, seek out the Mayor of London's video, which came out last week. It's a very clever illustration. As the passengers come off the tube train, the men sweep effortlessly up the escalator, while the women toil up the stairs. And there's a very smartly turned out chap from Transport for London. He's standing at the bottom, sending them each their different ways. And he just keeps saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. It's a brilliant video. Take a look. Because we know it's not just the way it is. So today I propose that we have to get beyond trying to install an escalator on the women's staircase, maybe with some sort of buggy attachment, I don't know, because apart from anything else, escalator works take forever. What we've got to do is fix work, and we have to fix our organisations so that they support equally everyone, women and men alike, who have caring responsibilities. So I'm going to take you through the evidence from the Working Families Annual Parent Survey, the Modern Families Index, which shows a major change in who cares and what this means for employee engagement and future talent pipelines. And in fact, I think that letting men slow down may be the solution to the gender pay gap. And then I'm going to outline some steps that will help you change things so that it's no longer just the way it is, but just the way you want it to be. What the Modern Families Index tells us is that many parents encounter difficulties balancing work and family, and that this is problematic for employers as well as for parents and children as work impinges into family life. We know that only 35% of parents manage to finish work on time every day. The majority are staying late, they're taking work home, or they're working in evenings or on weekends at least some of the time. And in some cases, this is significant. 40% of full-time workers are putting in extra hours. A third of those are working the equivalent of an extra full day every working week. And some part-time workers were actually putting in enough extra hours to qualify as full-time workers. And what this translates into is burnout, absenteeism, reduced productivity, dwindling levels of engagement and well-being. And when asked why, parents point to manager expectation, culture, the importance that is attached to long hours, all of which make it difficult to combine caring and work, whilst work organisation, so workloads being too big for the time allocated to them, mean that for many people this is a barrier in itself. And it's likely, I would say, that the long hours culture and poor work design are mutually reinforcing. So parents reported on the... No, it doesn't do it. Yes, it does. No. There we go. There we go. So I've, I've been really poor at putting these slides together. Here is slide number one. <laughs> How work affects family life. Parents reported that work impinges on the amount of time they're able to spend on a range of everyday family activities. So the ability to help children with homework, to help take them to activities or to simply hang out together are all negatively affected. And to a significant degree, over 40% of parents were saying that this happens often or all the time. And parents often also identified health and well-being effects, poor diet, lack of exercise and relationship problems, all as a result of working time overspill. So life and work imbalance is apparent here, and this may foster feelings of resentment towards employers and dis dissatisfaction with current work-life fit. So the result, parents say, is they look before they leap. So now I've got to look and see where the slide is that goes with it. There we go. Um, almost 70% of fathers and more than 80% of mothers would consider their childcare needs before taking a new job or a promotion. And not surprisingly, perhaps that's most important. You see, see that third from the, the left slide. Most important to the under-35s when children tend to be younger. 
But if we look more closely to the millennials, those that year there, what you're seeing is that more millennial fathers than mothers say that they intend to reduce their hours or downshift their roles at some point in the next two years. And the next slide shows us that these young fathers do mean what they say. That one there. Because here you can see that men and women are taking action. When we took mothers and fathers together, we found that 17% of all parents were deliberately stalling their careers, 13% leaving their employer, 11% refusing a new job because of a lack of good work-life balance opportunities. But it's when you split out the data like that by gender that the significance is clear, because that's when we see that there was very little difference in response between mothers and fathers. What this means is that men are now making the career compromises that women have been making for decades. So we've known about the motherhood penalty for a long time, but now we really have to start thinking about a parenthood penalty, where fathers, as well as mothers, are bumping up against a world of work that remains insufficiently flexible. And in fact, when, when you look at all of this through the prism of gender, you discover that fathers are more sensitive to organisational culture than mothers are. So we're seeing effects that are not only damaging for the individual, though of course they are, to health and well-being, but for business, a lack of work-life balance and family-friendly working can really harm recruitment and retention, as well as, if you think about those young men, really slowing down the talent pipeline. Now, I'm sure you'll expect me to point to flexible working as a solution. Yes, on paper, flexibility is available. The reality for many parents is that it's not a realistic option. Almost a third of respondents said that they are unable to work flexibly. So there's a real gap between policy and practice in many organisations. And it's striking too that for around, of, around one third of those who are working flexibly, work-life balance is not improved by doing so. So flexible working is not a solution in itself. It has to go hand in hand with realistic workloads and work design. So that leaves us with the question, what has to be done? Well, the parents, most frequently when asked, what can employers do, said, make efforts to change the company culture so that work-life balance is more acceptable. And flexible working does, of course, remain a key part of that solution. Parents also highlighted a lack of control over their working lives, and flexibility is a key tool for gaining control. Those who had access to flexible working practices, so they weren't necessarily using flexible working, but they knew that they could if they wanted to, those parents were reporting higher level, levels of control than those who did not have access. And so that really highlights the importance of workplaces that support flexibility to enhance people's work-life balance. So what I want to do is just draw on the experience of the best practice employers in the Working Families Member Benchmark. And on that basis, I want to suggest three steps, all interrelated, to support and unlock the potential of your working parents and also to let your dads slow down, which will help you move towards um, gender pay, being a gender pay gap neutral organisation. So understand your organisational culture, eliminate the parenthood penalty and add the flex factor, easy peasy. And as in every good three-step plan, each step is going to have three steps. So if we start with organisational culture, the first thing is to understand what's going on now. Why might parents feel that work-life balance is incompatible with what's expected of them? We almost all have statements of organisational values, but if there's a reality gap between what you say and how parents experience it, that's important to identify and address. So therefore, you need to understand how work in your business is designed and organised and whether managers have the skills to assess each role in their team. What does it really deliver? Where and when does the work need to be done? How much time will it take? What potential for flex does it have? I'm jumping ahead. So that you move beyond presenteeism to a culture where your people no longer feel that career prospects depend on putting in the extra hours, which is something that men in particular feel very strongly. Because we know that the index shows us that the parenthood penalty is very real for men as well as for women. So first things under this heading are to, is to review your communications. Information about parental rights and your policies should be accessible, familiar, well promoted. 
You need to treat family-friendly policies like a valuable product. You don't leave them on the shelf. You actively market them to everyone, not just to mothers. You've got to target your men. Then you need to review your leave policies. Promoting shared parental leave is an obvious winner here, never mind the depressing 2% nationally about take-up. When we look at working families members um, who have matched SPL to their maternity offer and who sell it and resell it to their men, they're reporting 40 to 50% take-up of SPL. If you're not matching to, to maternity, at the very least, pay paternity leave, even for the statutory two weeks, because that sends such a powerful message about how you value the fathers you employ. And so to put your current practice into context, consider benchmarking. Our working families benchmark is open all year round with the top 30 in the UK announced during Work Life Week in October. Happy to help you if we can. But finally, you need to address alignment across the organisation. We all know that people leave managers rather than organisations. I'm sure Patrick will be talking about this. But now is the time to think about manager support and consistency of practice. Your final step is to add the flex factor. So first, you need to interrogate how is flexibility already working for you? How do your flexible per policies translate into practice? Are they consistently taken up? What is good practice and what does it look like in your specific setting? One size doesn't fit all, obviously. And then because parents are actively looking for family-friendly roles, the Happy to Talk Flexible Working logo helps you promote externally the work your managers are obviously already doing on job design so that you can attract new people to the human-sized jobs that they're creating. And the final step is being able to say that flexibility is a reality for everybody in your organisation, that all jobs, internal and external, have their potential for flexibility included from the get-go. And the question then becomes why a job may not be done flexibly. So that's Happy to Talk Flexible Working. That logo and guidance are free to download from the Working Families website. The Prime Minister has called for all jobs to be flexible by default, and Happy to Talk was a recommendation within the Taylor Review of Modern Workplaces. I'm currently on the Joint Government and Industry Task Force on Flexible Working in response to, that, to the Prime Minister's call. So the time is now, and parents are looking for it. That's the solution from our perspective to the gender pay gap. Let your men slow down. Let your women feel confident in your support for them. So do contact me um, if I can help in any way, and I hope um, shortly to add some depth to this necessarily top-level review during the Q&A. Thank you very much.